Yeah, so my name is Misty DeMeo. I work on a website that you might have heard of and on a Mac package manager you might use, and that is not why I'm here today. I'm here today because I play too many old video games. <laughs> so some of my favorite video games are an old series of Japanese role-playing games called Lunar. Uh, there were three of them released on the Sega Saturn between 1996 and 1998. Uh, Two of those three were re-released on the PlayStation a few years later, and those PlayStation versions were released in English. But the problem for me is, I'm a Sega fangirl, I want to play them on the Saturn, and I really want to play that third one, which never came out in English and never came out for anything else. So I decided I'm going to translate all three of these games into English so I can play them. <laughs> which is... Maybe a little aggressive, but <laughs> I'm getting there. So let's start by finding some text. But first, I want to give a few acknowledgments. Uh, the stuff that I'm presenting here today has been my own research, but I've been working with a few other people on this project. And so I wanted to make sure to acknowledge them for all of the work that they've done on this, too. So let's find some text. Unfortunately, as you probably already know, <laughs> encodings. <laughs> Everything's Unicode, right? It's 1996. Everything is not Unicode. Uh, Unicode wasn't really in common use in Japan until the uh, early 2010s. So we are not looking at Unicode here. We're looking at a few different things. So there are two m common encodings that we could be looking at here. Uh, ShiftGIS and EUCJP are the most common ones. Uh, ShiftGIS is used on DOS, Windows, and Mac. EUCJP is used on Windows systems. Uh, there's also a third one called GISX0201. Uh, those first two encodings are multi multiple bytes, like Unicode is, which means that a single character can be one byte or two bytes. JSX0201 is only a single byte, uh, but that means it can't represent all of the characters used in Japanese. Day-to-day -day Japanese has several thousand characters, and JSX0201 can represent up to 256. <laughs> also, some people decided to just throw caution to the wind and make up their own encodings, so <laughs> there's that as well. So uh, my usual approach when I'm uh, looking at something like this is just to take a look at a line of dialogue and uh, divide that down into something small to see if I can find it. This is a screenshot from Magic School Lunar, which was released in 1997. Uh, so that first word there, which means uh, something like this year, is three characters. Uh, and I'm going to take that in Unicode and figure out what it is in the encodings that we're looking at. Right off the bat, I know that it cannot be just X0201 because it includes characters that don't exist in that encoding. So pretty good guess, it's not going to be that. Uh, ShiftGIS and EUCJP, uh, in each of those, it's going to be six bytes. Those bytes are completely different from each other. So to search for it, uh, I use a special version of grep called bgrep or binary grep. It lets you specify hex data to search for instead of text, and then it lets you find those inside of files. So if we're lucky, we might find a hit for one of these. And luckily this time, we did. Uh, this game uses uh, ShiftGIS, a mostly standard version of ShiftGIS. So uh, the bit I've selected there is the word that we picked out. Uh, if you read shift gis and hex, which I'm hoping you don't, <laughs> uh, the rest of this that follows is actually the rest of that dialog box. Uh, so in this game, it was actually really easy to find it. And uh, the game also happened to contain an uppercase English font as a part of this, so we can try replacing some text just to see what happens. Now, I said it was almost shift gis uh, they decided to simplify things by deciding it's no longer a multi or a variable width encoding. It's always two bytes. 
And luckily, every character that exists in the one byte region of ShiftGIS also has a version of itself which exists in the two byte region. So you don't actually lose the ability to represent any particular characters by saying you're not going to use one byte. This makes the text rendering routine a little bit easier. It means that instead of having to read one character and then figure out if you have to read another byte to get the rest of the character, you can always read two bytes as a part of your text rendering loop every time. So that one was actually pretty easy. Let's try something just a little bit harder. So this is from one of the other games called Lunar Silver Star Story. Uh, it was released in 1996. Uh, so the first word here is uh, Aresu, or Alex, which is the main character's name. This word can actually be represented in all three of the encodings that we're looking at here. Uh, but if we look at the rest of this dialogue, we can see that it actually does contain some characters that aren't in GISX 0201. So let's rule that out again and say that it's probably going to be ShiftGIS or EUCJP. And let's try binary grepping for it. And we get nothing. No hits. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have to try and find something uh, a little bit harder here. Encodings are fake, actually. <laughs> at this point, we could either be looking at compressed text, or we could be looking at a custom encoding of some kind. Uh, because I don't hate my life, I'm going to assume it's a custom encoding and not compression, because that's easier to figure out. So let's take a look at the font. Uh, this game uses a 16 by 16 font, which means every uh, letter in the game's font is 16 pixels by 16 pixels with four colors. And so we've got here a grid showing the first uh, few dozen characters in this font. And if we take a look right near the end of that first line and the beginning of the second line, we have the three characters that I pulled out earlier when I was showing. Uh, in order, a, re, su. So the order of the stuff that we have here, it's not based on any actual real Japanese encoding that exists, uh, but it was probably generated out of the game's script files in some way, because the order of a lot of the early characters in this font is actually based on the order in which some of the characters in the game are used in some of the script files. So that gives a hint that we might be looking at something where instead of a font, or instead of an encoding, we're looking at something a little bit simpler. So these are at indices 15, 16, and 17, or uh, hex bytes F, 10, and 11. Uh, or if we assume that each of these is going to be two bytes, the same way that we saw the text was earlier, uh, it'll be the six bytes that we've got down there. If we try searching for that, we find it. So this game is not using a real encoding. Instead, the script is actually written using raw indexes into the font table, <laughs> which is a little hard to work with, but at least we found it. So again, I tried replacing some of the text in it with other things I found in the font, just as an experiment picking random indexes in the game's font and seeing, uh, <coughs> does the index of that font show up if I replace that letter here? And thankfully, it did actually work. But why would you do that? It seems a bit messy. Uh, it can actually be a little more efficient to read it this way than something real. So instead of reading two bytes, looking it up in a table, then fetching the tile, you can skip that middle step. You don't have to contain a mapping between a letter and something in your font. You just have a direct one-to-one -one mapping. And since a lot of times back then, people were trying to optimize every single instruction they possibly could out of a pretty slow CPU, it might actually have felt worthwhile to eliminate one lookup for every character. So thank you. Uh, Thanks for listening to me blather about weird old video games. Uh, this is my Twitter and my GitHub. Uh, I talk about old weird games on my Twitter, and the tools that I've written for this project are on my GitHub. Uh, and if you come chat with me afterwards, I will talk to you about old video games. This is a promise. <laughs>